when we go out to measure people, we have a stratified sampling plan. So we are looking for specific numbers of people in each of these cells to make sure that we are capturing uh, the variation that we want to, want to capture. And, and sex isn't on here, but I would have a separate, say, you know, one of these for males and one of these for females. So, so that's how, if you're going to do, uh, you know, a valid um, anthropometric data collection, you know, you, it doesn't have to look exactly like this, but it needs to look something like this. You need to make sure that you're capturing all of the different categories. So I put on my last chart, we need to measure some white people and some Hispanic people, and we need to measure some young people and old people. So how many people do I need to measure? People are often uh, confused about this issue uh, with respect to population size. And there is a common misperception that um, the larger the population, the more people you need to measure. Uh, in fact, that's not the case. Uh, if everybody in China were the same size, I'd only have to measure one of them because they're all the same. So uh, it really has to do with um, how variable people are. So in this formula, n is what we're trying to find how many people, what's our sample size. So there are actually three things that determine that. Uh, the variability, s is one, and that's on the top of the equation. So the more variable we are, the more people we need to measure. And this is assuming that we're coming through the door randomly, okay? Um, the Z has to do with uh, confidence. Um, how confident do we want to be that we know we have the right answer? And the more confident we want to be, the more people we have to measure. So that, again, is on the top of the equation. And uh, C refers to the precision. How precisely do we need to know the answer? Do we need to know that this is plus or minus one millimeter, plus or minus eight millimeters? Um, the larger the number down here, um, the smaller the n over here. So, um, so let's work through an example. So for waist circumference, um, this is a military sample, but it doesn't matter. Uh, our mean is 802 millimeters. Our standard deviation is 81. Um, we've decided for this particular problem that the precision we need is 1.5% of the mean, which in this case is 12 millimeters. And we've decided that we want to be 95% confident that we have the right answer. And so we look up on a Z score table, and that is 1.96. So we throw those numbers in. One, that's the Z, that's the S, that's the C. Do the math, and we get 179 people. So what this is telling us is that, assuming people come through the door randomly, if I measure 179 people, I will be 95% confident that I know the true population mean within 12 millimeters. The mean value, though, is not very useful for design. If we did that height, doorway height at the mean of the people in this room, half of us couldn't go through, right? So from design point of view, we typically are at often a fifth percentile value and a 95th percentile value. So think about, uh, about the setup. This was with people randomly walking through the door. So pe people are walking through the door are more likely to be closer to the mean than they are to be in the tails of the distribution. So it would make intuitive sense that if you want to understand the true 95th percentile value and the true 5th percentile value, you need to measure more people than if you just want to know the mean value. Does that make intuitive sense? So, but you, we can figure that out mathematically, actually, and it turns out there is basically a correction factor uh, that all of this number essentially gets us that same level of confidence at the 5th to 95th percentiles. The input elements are the same, so it's essentially a constant. So if we do the same exercise, we get uh, 420. So the point is we have to measure more people if we want to understand people, uh, you know, understand the tails of the distribution, which I think makes more sense. Okay, so, so now we've decided how many people to measure. We've decided who we're going to measure. We've gone out, we measured them. Now, what do we do with that statistically? Um, the measures of central tendency, like the means, um, are good for population comparisons. 
I'm, I'm doing a thing at the moment where I'm comparing the Army, the U.S. Army and the U.S. Navy, and I want to know fundamentally, are these populations different or are they fundamentally the same? So I'm going to use the mean value for that. Um, but measures of diversity, um, standard deviation, is useful for comparing one dimension with another, what's more variable, uh, and that's helpful, for example, in that sample size question, what's the more variable dimension? So I will look at standard deviation. Um, uh, I want to particularly mention the coefficient of variation because um, standard deviation, uh, if you're familiar with how it's calculated, takes into account the uh, value of the measurements. So standard deviation of, for example, stature, because it's a big number, um, is going to be um, larger than standard deviation of finger length because it's a small number. And um, in anthropometry, we have some very big numbers and some very small numbers. So just comparing the standard deviations can be misleading. So um, what I like to do is look at the coefficient of variation, which is the standard deviation divided by the mean. So it is a, expressed as a percent. So it takes into account, takes out of the equation the size of the dimension. And then finally, uh, percentiles. And I have another couple slides about that, but just so we're clear, uh, percentile refers only to a single dimension at a time. So if I say 95th percentile stature, what that means is the value at which 95% of the population is below that stature value. So, so that's all univariate uh, data. So we're looking at one dimension at a time. Um, for design, it is often useful to look at multiple dimensions at the same time. And we can do that with correlation coefficients, and I've got a slide about that in a minute. Um, but I want to talk, uh, correlation coefficients are simply a measure of the relationship between two or more variables. And uh, that goes from zero to one, zero meaning no relationship, and one meaning a perfect relationship. Um, I want to caution you about the statistical significance of that. Uh, if you use a statistical package, it will give you the, the R value, 0.73, whatever it is, and also a statistical significance. And just a word of caution, the test that it's responding to is, is this correlation coefficient statistically different from zero? Well, if you have a large enough N, almost any of them is different from zero. So it may be statistically significant, but not very important. Um, and then a regression equation expresses that mathematical relationship, allowing you to infer one from the other. Um, and those tend to be population specific. So if I have a regression equation, I'm going to predict arm length from my stature. Um, that will be a different um, equation for Americans than it might be for Dutch people or something. So uh, um, because of the proportional differences. OK, so this is head length and head breadth. So um, these are poorly correlated dimensions. And by that I mean if, my, if I know my head length is 190, well, what's my head breadth? Well, it could be anywhere from here to here, which is practically the whole distribution of head breadth. Poorly correlated. They don't tell me much one about the other, uh, even though it's statistically significant if my n is large enough. So here, um, there's a point on the back of the neck called cervicale, and we can measure a height there. So cervicale height and stature are highly correlated. So if, I, if my stature is 1,800, I know that my cervicale height is between you know, 1,520 and 1,550. So that's kind of useful information about the relationship of those two. Okay. So now, though, I want to talk about that fifth percentile female, because she is everywhere. You, you look, I mean, she is on every street corner. So here's, here's what we did. We, um, we measured the distance from the shoulder to the top of the head. Then we measured the distance from the bust to the shoulder. And then we measured the distance from the waist to the bust, and so on, OK, all the way down. And then we also measured stature. So we took the fifth percentile, shoulder to top, and then the fifth percentile, bust to shoulder, and so on down the line. We added those up. 
136.89. And we did the same thing with the 95th percentile, okay? Did that with a lot of people. Then we took the 5th percentile stature and the 95th percentile stature, and you can see they're very different, very different. So why is that the case? It's the case because an individual who is fifth percentile this is not also fifth percentile in this. She may be twelfth percentile in this. She may be eighteenth percentile in this. And so even though you know, we have um, design requirements to fit that fifth percentile female and the 95th percentile male, they don't exist. I mean, there is no such person. So whenever you get a requirement like that, you need to go back to whoever's doing the requirement and say, fifth percentile what? Fifth percentile stature, fifth percentile weight, fifth percentile hand length, what are we doing? Depending on your application, um, you can use uh, regression equations to help you solve that problem. So if you remember, a couple of slides back, I had the, the very neat line with cervicality height and stature, and the points were close together. So using a similar approach, we could take our fifth percentile stature and predict shoulder to top of head and bust to shoulder. And if we do that, and then we add them up, then they do add up. Same thing at the, almost the same thing at the other end. Now, any one of these values is not the fifth percentile value, but you have a fifth percentile stature with parts that add up to that. So again, depending on what your question is, this may be an approach that you want to look at. So just to, to kind of round this part out, so just as there is no fifth percentile, there is no 95th percentile, there is no average person either. So this is a, a different way of looking at it, but I took from a large sample, I took a stature, took the mean value, plus or minus a third of a standard deviation. So just a small, small group right in the middle. So this is the range of that as I defined it. 23% of my sample was mean of stature, plus or minus a little bit, okay? So then I took those people. How many of those people also have a mean of chest circumference? Again, mean plus or minus a third of a standard deviation. The answer is 115 or five and a half percent. So then I added, of those 115 people, how many also have a mean crotch height? And the answer is three percent. So dot, dot, this dot, dot, dot is just so I can make it bigger, but, but this is the eighth dimension. By eight dimensions, I'm down to less than 0.1%. And I did this on a sample where I had 132 dimensions to work with. So the fact is, there is no average person either. Which is terrific news, actually. Because it keeps me in business. <laughs> if the average person were out there, I would be penniless on the street corner. Um, but, but really, it, it, it is the key. I mean, we vary in so many different ways. That's what, that's what makes it challenging um, to design products and workspaces and clothing and protective equipment that fits everybody. It's really hard.